I'm not sure the process, but maybe we could. East? Uh, where on East? The only development that's happening up there. Well, I don't know. Uh, it's like there. on the left hand side of the hill. Um, Luton well, and I talked about it today. But the driveway goes right up. Or is it west? Rural west. Rural west. You know, it's all about relative. Why it is a right? big difference. West oh, east and east. west. That's yeah, that's okay. That's not that's sort of a demarcation. Yeah, that it's somewhat, the driveway yeah. goes uphill, and so this, the driveway's washing out into River Road West. And so there's, I think, maybe just re looking at the access permit and like grading down off the road. And this is what it looks like. Let's see what it looks like. White House, White House, and I'm going to well Okay, so they've been doing development up on the hill, and I have actually mentioned this to a couple of folks over time that they were actually pushing things onto the bank across the road. So I think we need to monitor more closely and not just assume it's watch out of our, of our road. Is that like a flood? Yeah, can you pull that? Is that pushing? Or no, like they're checking it out? Do that. Do they own the property that they're pushing sort of across the road? I don't property. know. Yes, that. Um, maybe we could meet tomorrow and go with the tax maps. I'll do it. 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 i and I think the development is that area being, I don't know who's doing the work. It's the first thing I want to say. The second thing I want to say is, um, Andy Mink owns, owns it and came to one of our select board meetings a year ago-ish about development and looking for our support of a grant to develop up there. So I assume he would be your contact. Who's Andy Mink? We're still on the support concerns. Yeah, done? I'm done. The only um, so you had you had me down the um, questions potentially about the um, market. Yeah. yeah, I did reach out to Brian and Drew Wexler. 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 Mm -hmm. um, and I, I did get an email response from them, which basically is you know, still there. <laughs> The other thing I did want to um, bring up was the NBA grant and what have you heard about shifting from the last mile and the dual properties? The NBA grant and the dual property. Yeah, well, the dual property. Yeah, I think the dual property. Yes. Yeah, okay. Do you think it should be another topic or like some side of topic? I think it's, it's, to me, it's all related to what happens if we do not. Yeah. Like that. Yeah. We'll assume all of those things fall under you. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You don't mind. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'm going to do this. Okay. Yeah. 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 From the public and share what I'm going to share with yeah. the public. You know, I'm not going to, unless you want me to file personally. No, which is, I don't know. <laughs> I'll correct you if you do. <laughs> it's your last meeting. Correct all you want. I deserve it. I don't think I have a Thank you. We'll have to go hand in hand for like that. Yeah. In ARPA funds, you know, I've got the data from those grants and how, yeah, well, we have that. Then I'll just hand it over to Dr. to spend it all. Okay. Any other issues or concerns? Not hearing any. Rosemary is getting away. I think she just had the orders. Unless you know something I don't. I have one. Oh, there you are. What? I have one liquor license. Okay. Okay. From, um, are you ready for me? Yep. Okay. From um, Sudoku. That's the um, Northern University. 
Oh, yes. Is that a special event? Or no, it's their regular first class with her Okay. Now, you know, do you have something for us to sign? Nope. Okay. So we need a motion. Well, to approve the license for the college vendors. So next up. So next up. We have a second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All right, have it. Have you folks seen the buyout property? Okay, next up is Johnson Library and Public Comment. Um, Tom, do you want to take this off? Yes, so um, on January 30th, uh, the Department of Libraries announced a grant for 300000 for $1.5 um, to be used for capital improvements. Um, specifically with the intent of increasing access to internet um, in rural communities and uh, Johnson fits the bill for rural communities. Um, and there's been a lot of conversation that with the with the building um, closed for renovations because of the flood that um, to keep it where it is, it's going to keep producing access for more marginal populations to have access to the internet. And so, um, the Department of Libraries has been working with me and Kelly and moving forward to put a, put together their project um, just to keep that moving forward. Um, if we were to stick with FEMA, we'd be limited to about $156,000 worth of mitigation, which is pretty limiting. Whereas if we put FEMA on the back burner and work with the Department of Libraries, um, we would start at $300,000 and, and up to $1.5. Uh, part of libraries have stated that they'd like to give at least one library in each county um, an award, and they've made it clear that our library is the worst off in the state. So, in the state, I think right now it is um, because of our situation. And you're, and you're somewhat optimistic we might get a million plus. I think if we had a plan that was checked all the boxes, um, we had a good chance. Yeah. Can we talk about the grant? What's the content of the grant? Um, I don't have a copy of it with me right now, but it's pretty straightforward. Um, there's a narrative, and then there's, unlike most grants where you need to have a completed project um, at the time of application, they're accepting like a rolling application, if you will. So if we get our name in there with an idea, a concept, um, and working with the estimates, we can continue to add to that grant over time before they award. Um, they know that that's a very limited, you know, it's only six week application period um, and there's 251 towns to compete with. So they, they were aware that putting together a million and a half dollar project in six weeks, it's, it's not realistic. Um, but uh, I think it's the idea and the concept that we can get out and can get across. Um, and once we start that process, then those numbers will tighten up. Um, and there's other organizations that have expressed um, the ability to work together. There's Vermont Community Fund. Um, they've been interested in giving a significant amount of money. I think it was three hundred thousand dollars towards a, towards a project they would like to distribute throughout multiple organizations in Johnson. But there's an idea, so if we fit, you know, if that application looks good, some of that money could go towards this project as well. And then Vermont Emergency Management, um, as part of the Getting buildings out of the floodplain, um, there's up to three hundred thousand dollars from them. That may or may not. Still unclear. I'm waiting for an answer if they can be combined. They're both federal funding sources, but since there's no match and we're not using them as a match, it looks like we can put them together for a total of one point eight. But it's just not clear. So I think you know, I think the pie is the sky. You know, like we have a great building, we have a great community, and it would be silly not to like take this opportunity to say what is the Johnson of tomorrow. Like let's make it happen. You know, we have. Now it's time. You know, we have two more weeks, right? <laughs> yep. Okay. Thank you. Uh, public comment. I assume there are people who would like to give public comment. So if you want to raise your hand, if you're interested in commenting publicly, now is the time. I want to just say that we were able to get a letter of support today from Catherine Gallagher, um, who's the superintendent of the school for the region. Great. Thank you. Yeah. Charlie? So you talked about moving out of the floodplain and i'm afraid that what you're going to want to do is to flood proof the existing building that's what i expected to hear i don't know if that's the direction you're going 
problem with flood proofing an existing building is that if you stop the water from going into that building, it's going to flood the neighbors. And if you need to, there's some good modeling from LCPC that will show you the effect of removing that from, from being able to be inundated, the effect it will have on neighboring properties. So all that money, I was hoping maybe we could, I'd love it if you could move the building. I doubt for that amount of money you could because it's a gorgeous building. But there are alternative sites. We got some off the cuff numbers. Oh, wait, wait. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry to finish this box. No, I'd like to hear that. We don't okay. Have okay. So the off the cuff number from one mover was 200000 to move on a $150,000 foundation. So it's actually more affordable to move the existing historic structure. Um, and then, so we use FEMA money to put the structure like back as it was, right? Um, restore to pre-flood, and then maybe 2025, relocate that entire structure for less than it would be to build a new building, and maybe even put on an addition to the for the displaced community space yep. that's there. That's what that's. But it's like there's so many moving parts, so that's why it's like, what do you guys want? Like, what's the idea? Let's, and then we can get those numbers for that idea, right? Because that blew my mind that it was so affordable to do. Yeah. So that that would be my objection. To renovating the current building and leaving it there is that you're going to flood your neighbors. Yeah. Okay. Well, in, in conjunction with that, even we we did have an idea um, from, from Stevens and Associates from 2017 to drive proof the basement. Um, when we proposed that to uh, Dr. Richard Downer, he said the the 10 foot, the, the rise, the hydrostatic lift risk is so high that that's not reasonable. So Dry proofing the, is not a reasonable option, we learned. So we gotta move. Got to move. <laughs> cool. <laughs> and the trustees had an emergency meeting this past week and LCPC was was there and they've been able to get us the, the flood maps um so of the town so we can know where we might be able to relocate our Recent flood maps. Recent the updated. Yes. The draft. The draft. The draft. Yes. Yeah. There's actually a copy right there. Um, that came from Gene, actually. Yeah. To show, like, some of the ideas, like, open space is still within. So the flood, the flood map will change, right? So what was a 500 year floodplain, or was a 100 year floodplain, um, is now encroached so much more. And that 500 is encroached so much more. And, and even part of the Legion Field are in the 500 year floodplain and the properties across the street. So it, there is some serious consideration that even though there aren't the official FEMA maps, we're only going to do this once. We got to do it right, you know. And like, I know where you got a great piece of land you already own. <laughs> this so-called industrial. You own the land. Tell me how it's going to increase employment and tax base. Well, I'll tell you how it's going to increase tax base. It's going to be used by taxpayers. But as a municipal building, it pays no taxes. But it's not, it's not paying taxes now, and it's going to be less of a drain on future tax. <laughs> and I think, I think the basis on which the industrial park was sold in the populace, I think we were expecting something a whole lot sooner than what we got. It's a way to open. I just want to make sure we're keeping on topic of the sure. library. Move it, move the right. library to the industrial park. As someone who uh, agrees wait. that the industrial park might not be the only use for the jewel, I think that the library would be a good fit there. Um, and a little facetious. You know, uh, there are there are other ideas. I, I you know, if, if moving it to Legion Field is feasible and we can get a grant to pay for it with no town match. I, uh, so we still have public comment and then we have select board yeah. comments. Yeah. We, uh, right. Lois? Um, I wonder if you could tell us a little bit about the Legion field. That I personally think it would be a great idea, but then I heard a reference to might be different after this new flood map. So give a little bit more so the comment was that she'd like to hear more about legion field and that that option may be different after seeing the revised flood map so um 
I met with Gene Engel and Kelly Van Dorn last week and Brian Kelly's husband. And we like staked off the four corners of the building. Um, and that was with the intent of adding like a 20 by 40 addition to the back, thinking that could, like, the new the addition plus the move would be under the 1.5. So that way the town's not losing any space, right? So it's it's an as is at a new location. Um, and what felt like the best spot was what's now Lamoille North uh, property. It's where the dirt lot is, where the alumni hall uh, was, and now is like a parking lot next to Legion Field. But as you can see on the map, the 500 year floodplain, that orange area encroaches into that space. Um, but I did meet with a contractor who was awarded the bid to fix it to, for the mitigation to the library. And there are options about putting in um, a higher frost wall, just elevating the building above 24 to 40, 24 inches above the 500 year floodplain. So it's not a no, but it it's like, is this the right choice? Is it responsible to just elevate a building in a 500 year floodplain when we've had three 500 year floods in the last 100 years? Um, and then we looked at the far western edge, which is uh, a flex of studio center property near the softball backstop. And that's a great spot too. It's kind of a quiet spot during Tuesday Night Live. It's usually where like kids and dogs go, right? <laughs> um, so maybe instead of kids and dogs, we'll have, you know, the historical site selling pies instead, you know, I don't, I don't know. <laughs> okay. Yeah, it's like, an, it's an interesting idea. We also looked across the street at two open lots. And as you can see on the map, those are also um, within that new floodplain. So there has to be other property around, but how do you keep the biggest community center um, as libraries shift away from books and more into programming, they're kind of becoming our new community center. How do you keep that within walking distance of our village, right? So. We have, I think it's really important to keep that in mind as you look for that next site, you know, and that's kind of what we're here for today. So, Tom, just a clarification, is all of the Legion fields now on the Bible this year? No, no, the Western Edge is not. Oh, okay. Yeah, you can see that blue circle. That's like... I can't think of your Oh, sorry, sorry. There's like a blue circle, and that's uh, Legion Field, and the Western side is not. Any other public comments? A question? Okay, I'm going to open it up to board discussion. And if folks have questions, just go ahead and raise your hand. I'll make eye contact with you and then I'll look down. <laughs> uh, um, <laughs> uh, so, board. What are your thoughts, questions, concerns? Anyone want to kick it off? I would be, I'm kind of blown away that somebody gave me an off the cuff number that was for moving the building. They're coming Friday to get a real quote. So the, the off the cuff plan, as the library sees it, and you work when the library is due to flood mitigation in place. Mm -hmm. Hopefully, hopefully move it, raising FEMA funds, and or I'm just asking a question. No mm -hmm. flood mitigation. It would literally so we're not okay. We're lifting the building and taking it and refurbishing it, basically in place. We know FEMA has two parts. There's uh, restore to pre-flood, and then there's mitigation. Right. We would probably withdraw mitigation and just do the restore to pre-flood. Um, and it, it we we would save. Twelve and a half percent of one hundred and fifty-six thousand lives. So it's actually would cost less to, to move the building. Has the library discussed maybe talking with the Freemasons to see if they want to sell that building they're in? But you're there now. We haven't talked about it, but I know one um, some of the difficulties that have come up um, just by utilizing the building um, is parking accessibility. Um, people walking to finding access there. I think Gene had mentioned some numbers have gone down in certain populations because of the accessibility of the library being on the corner. Yeah, I, I understand. It. It needs yeah, yeah. So I like the response. <clears throat> it's so central. It's just a mm -hmm. random question. You know, we haven't had that conversation with them, but we did briefly discuss the feasibility of if it were a library and there. The librarians and we were told in the that that we, we just agreed there in brief discussion. 
The other question I had is about the lot across from the school, the old Bradley property um, is for sale. It's directly across from the school. I can't tell from that map if it falls within the flood the floodplain, but I, well, I don't know because it loops around where um, the Reeves live. It's just confusing, the Reeves and the Reeves. <laughs> they are different families. Oh, no, 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 no. So the school's here. So anyway, I just am not sure if that plot if that plot is in this white area, which I think it actually might be, is my point. So we could put together options, the grant ask for options. So that's a great idea. That's so thrilling. Okay. Yeah, I like to believe in being able to take more land off of that space. Understanding that multiple committees that use that space is not wanting to limit. Can Pearl Street Bridge? What's the way limit on that bridge for getting a brick building across? Just out of curiosity. Well, there is a covered far. bridge on the other side. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that one. Yeah, no, no. no. We don't uh, it's a think great top question. Off, yeah, there is no helicopters. Helicopters. I think you know a lot of that stuff really gets into the weeds. Yeah. About. Well, it's a logistical like shutdown immediately yeah, if we can't get it there. Yeah. But but Messier is going to come up with that information mm -hmm. hopefully okay. after it's yeah. after their site visit, yeah. and I think that will answer a lot of those okay. questions. Um, I just didn't want to see us getting too far into the data of properties, and we don't even know if we can get it across the bridge. Absolutely, yeah. Yeah. they're yeah. coming. Right they're, they're definitely going to be looking at them. Okay. One thing we've already heard is they would need to elevate the building itself would stick out over the Texas rails on that yeah. bridge. So they have to elevate the building enough to get it, which means the lamp posts lamp will post need to be more temporary. So it's it's on their radar, definitely. Next time we play, <clears throat> just load it. Yeah. <laughs> Way better idea. We have to take a spot down as well. We have to take down some light poles too. Yeah, and sure. And uh, so it's been, been working with Pam Crockett with the village. You can identify poles that need to be replaced anyways. Yeah. You're kind of like knocking out this two birds, one stone. Like, how do we like tie it all together, right? It's like, now it's game time. Let's do it all. Um, yeah. the, the the other thing I just wanted to mention was you mentioned how low the cost was. I at our at the meeting that I attended on library trustees last Thursday night, okay. Kelly threw out a figure of. Million dollars yes. in place on the foundation on Legion Field. What that all entails, I'm not sure whether that entails an addition or just the building or or what. In the, in the notes that I took from that evening and what was I understanding, and it was still rough. It included uh, excavating, excavating a new eight foot foundation, a slab for the twenty by forty. This is all estimations and the moving, including the removal of the light poles and the power lines, because they estimated how much it generally costs per pole yeah. to remove it. And so it was closer to 1 million to 1.5 million in place to get it over there, to get it over yeah. there, counting everything, right. removing the, the yeah. yeah. That's fine. So you actually brought up a question that I think is something that the library trustees should consider, and that's new versus move and you know for a million and a half bucks you could i believe you could build a brand new building which would be i, I understand the value of the historic building all that but a brand new building that was highly energy efficient um that would give you more space is not something you should Simply abandoned, mm -hmm. um, you know. I think, it, and I think the nice thing about the grant application is it does give you the potential to list some options that that you might be able to review that you just don't have time to do right now. In my opinion, the important thing is get something in, try and secure the money, and then you know we can right. we can come up with a plan. Sure. No, honestly, I like the idea of the center. Shana Mark, do you have anything you want to ask? Uh, um, I said my piece on on moving it. If new is a possibility, I'm certainly open to it. But I agree with Duncan that the important thing is 
uh, you know, getting conceptual approval and getting a foot in the door. One thing that did come up at the meeting earlier tonight is if we were to move it, then that that the grade of where it is now could be brought back down to natural level, and it would be kind of become a, a potential lagoon that would mitigate flood for waters for others in town. Yeah. I would like to like. Yeah, well, we we, we have an application for an adjoining property for flyout, so the two of those could nicely tie together. That is a third. Um, yes, I um, I love that old building, and I would be open to a new building if it looked just like you were. It was made of brick and an art. Yeah. <laughs> then I'm like, I'm well, nice. I love the historic nature of that. Well, maybe that's not. It's, re it's really a beautiful building. It is. And um, if we, so what do we do? If we build a new building, do we leave that there and just sell it to somebody? You could buy it. You like it. I love it. I would buy it. Sorry, sorry. Hold on. I just got it. Yep. Um, one of the problems you mentioned is that the old, the old building isn't energy efficient. Could it be made energy efficient as part of the grant to move it? That included. All it takes is money. Yeah, <laughs> it sounds like anything is a possibility, so possibly. Well, it is. <laughs> Sorry, what were you saying, Duncan? I forget. Okay. Well, she let me tell. You remember. <laughs> Yeah, go ahead. Sorry, Ron, wait, maybe I discussed it. It's like, how much money are we talking every year? I guess a grant is like a million, million and a half. It's going to be grant from this grant. Well, the total grant awards are anywhere from 300000 to $1.5 million. Um, with discussions with Vermont Emergency Management, adding an additional 300000 and the Vermont Community Foundation of an additional 300,000, but not all of that would be for this project, but for spread throughout the town of jobs. And then there's still other opportunities as well. Um, I think what's clear is that the library in Johnson has been identified as a need for something different. And this is like part of that discussion. Yeah, I think those numbers up here, 2.1, yeah. But, you know, I think we can do it for less. Right, like that's what's fun. Yeah, depending on what you want to do. Yeah. <laughs> Build the next building for three point one million. Yeah. If if we get this grant, um, let's do that conceptual. I think we'll, we'll be happening tonight. Um, my understanding is there's a zero town match. That's a big one right there. One point one point five million is nothing for the taxpayers to be a lot. Well, yeah, I think from Johnson taxes, yeah. right? Property right. taxes. Jacob Federal, but yeah. Local property. Comes out of the Sue? Let's see. Sue? I think money aside, if you look at the big picture, the library is one of the things that makes Johnson a you should say. And also, I think the library is one of our biggest assets. Can you speak up? Uh, did you hear any other? I heard something about the library making Johnson unique. The first point was that the building itself is one of the things that makes us unique. I think we should say for that reason. Uh, the other thing is, I think it's one of our biggest assets that we should believe that we have to do to do it right and do it once. And we're going to get money if we have to. But I don't think we should look for the So people say no. Yeah, they're looking for a motion for consensual approval. No, I think we just have to have consensus. Are we consented? I think I think there's no downside to moving forward. Okay. Yeah, let's do that. Unless it falls through the Pearl Street Bridge, and then <laughs> so it sounds like the new board made an update. Huh? State will buy another bridge. 
Right. So conceptually, we're agreeing that we should go for the grant. We should go for whatever all options, like all ideas are on the table is what I think I'm hearing. And um, the board would like an update based on the findings from the site visit. Okay. Those that update will probably be over email because uh, the grant was already yeah, submitted before the next meeting. You guys talk. It should yeah. probably come up in a meeting too, just so that it is in the minutes as a follow up. Has the library talked with the Tuesday Left Committee in a general thought on their feeling? If it were to hold there? Howard is aware okay. of the project and uh, he seems like, I mean, I know he's not the entire Tuesday Night Left Committee. Right, but he's, he's really involved. <laughs> He's the chair. <laughs> yeah, we got the pizza oven committee here. Skate ranks not the protection. They're right. No comment. <laughs> uh, we do have letters in the packet too. And just for clarity, the comments and letters aren't all at Johnson residents, just looking at some of them. So we should just make note of that some folks responded directly to the front porch forum posting um others responded in the comments on facebook those are the emails yeah, I'm what was the matter this wasn't in the package that we got no because the comments didn't exist yet hey so you late. can read them yeah <laughs> okay any more discussion on library that's exciting let's call it okay good job Jen. Yep. And planning. Um, actually, has anyone heard that David made it into the state? Williams? I didn't either. Not specifically, but the last that I heard from him, he was planning on being here. Yeah, and that uh, he thought his flights would come in on time. But he did. I hadn't. I yeah. haven't heard since. Okay. What happens if the moderator doesn't show up? I actually like just floor. want to floor. actually. Yeah, we like to the floor. We always like to the floor. Um, I think that for you, I think we should do the review of the bio applications just in case he ends up coming. It is possible. I think. We're going to do the Williams. We should be out of the discussion. Well, we're pushing seven up to eight. Yeah. Well, so eight. Eight. Yeah. May I actually show up? He yeah. usually does, but he, the last couple of years he has shown up. Like has Wait a minute. I don't Did think we need to go into We need to pull to Christine. Which is the Yeah, let's do it. Uh, I would move that we sign the draft letter of support for the grant as compared by Jeff and Second. Okay. Did you see? We have a motion and second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Does anybody have a signature copy that like one that that you could sign as chair? A copy of that letter. The letter was mailed to us earlier today. I think it was, I, it was a Google Docs. Yeah, and I had a hard time putting it in, but I do, I do you have one. Right here. You have it. Oh, perfect. Never mind. I did. Well, I figured it out. Imagine that. Oh, perfect. Okay. And then there was a letter, um, letter support from the law and work came from the superintendent. Yeah. And what is the date today? Oh, yeah, three five. Thank you. Thank you. All right, buyouts. Okay, buyouts. So Scott made an observation about one property, and I don't know if it's specifically one that's in that. Back it or not? It is. It is. It's the Pine Hill properties. Is it all of the properties? In no, no, the Red four. House on Railroad Street. Yeah, that's not. Okay. You were talking about the blue one. Yeah. yeah. All right. So I think. So which one is it? 
red one. The red one is the one that they had requested a buyout for. Sorry, what is what is the one reference to? The blue mouse. Yeah, that's what it was. Isn't that is that the same owner or different? Owner? Same owner, but different property. I checked the address of each of the properties in the packet when we got the when we got the applications. I checked the address of each, and it's definitely the red house. Okay. Sorry, so what, this one doesn't affect it. what was the conversation? So the blue one. I had a, a discussion with the owner of Blue House with the potential of maybe selling out that house and then building a property higher up out of the floodplain. And when I asked that question to the state um, through the new mapping group that I got thrown into, they would have to subdivide pre signing the gig with payment and finance. That would have to be done ahead of time. So if there's anybody on this list that has hired a land that may be able to build outside of the floodplain and just raise the house below or the apartment below, they would have to subdivide that. And the, FEMA would allow buys that? The property, buys the property. But FEMA would allow that? That's because they're, they're transferring it. The land is subdivided. It's outside the 100 year floodplain. I mean, they reduce the cost. I'm not sure how the appraisal would work after right. rain. That's what I mean. If you go from a three acre lot to a one acre lot, it's not worth as much. So you might not get that much from FEMA, but it's still in the property. The property is a rarity right now. Right. And, and think other, so. other towns are dealing with it, and that's how they, they subdivide it. And they said the road frontage that we want to feed themselves. The higher the highway, highway and you all right away to their other point. Now, the town really needs to be involved, so. right? I thought house. it was the red house, that, or no, the blue house is the one that was brought up because they're barely in the 100 year floodplain. I think their driveway is, but the house is not, but it floods anyway. Is this the blue apartment complex? Yeah, or? okay, yeah. Yeah, that one was very hard to get. Great, yeah. I mean, uh, was it very hard to get? Yes. So for tonight, are we looking to conceptually? You can either approve these applications, which, okay, here's just my opinion, um, and I'm not speaking for the board in any way when I say this. In my opinion, are we really going to turn down these properties that we know flood? And if we're not going to turn them down, why wouldn't we approve them tonight and let the homeowners move on? Just my opinion. Um, but we don't have to. If there's reason not to, that's fine. Um, but I think that looking at each of the addresses for these properties, we know they flooded. To me, it's a no-brainer for the six properties we have in front of us. Okay. I don't just mention this. And the other perk for the, the town and the village, especially the village center, is when you remove these properties, especially if they were built on silt, and we can remove that fill down to its natural layer that it existed. You create more room for flood water to cool up. So it's sort of a win-win, and especially along you know the the riverways, that's awesome. Otherwise, you have a whole long street, which would look a little weird, be swampy and mosquito-y. But properties that are along the river, it's it's huge to remove some of that back. I mean, we've talked about this through the state. Um, down over at the South Mill Park, that low lying area, FEMA came in and was thinking we should remove three feet of soil to become another sink to get rid of the flood waters. So it, it benefits further flood mitigation stuff. I mean, it doesn't benefit us for factual stuff, right? But if we can reduce the amount of flood water coming into our town by mitigating those properties to a lower elevation, it seems like it's a win win. Which, in theory, actually does help us in the long run of the yes, tax right. I wholeheartedly agree. I think you were there, Stephanie Smith. I said, I want Vermont Emergency Management to get more money to take material out of that. Yeah. That helps. Yeah. Yeah. So, if you plan to do that, I think we can do Yep. Right. Yep. Unless it's ice chain location. Right? Maybe. <laughs> Trees usually yeah, go down in the ice jams. Yeah. I, I know. Yeah. Well, it depends on the flood. If it's a small flood, the trees suck it up. Right. Which is a big help. The banks in the place too. Yeah. 
Uh, okay, so what is the board's pleasure? I would move to approve the six applications that we have for us tonight. I'll second. See, I'm creeping up. We have six. We don't have seven. Sorry? Unless six. we are we, I know, but uh, Scott said seven. I think you said seven. 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 Three, nine, mm -hmm. lower name. 2903 I they won't pay their names to the public. Oh, yeah, that's okay. true. Do, we, do you want me to read off the addresses and we can check what we have? Seven. We got seven. Okay, we got seven. Okay. 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 okay, maybe. Yep. Thank you. Sorry. I'm not sure why. Seven, then it is. Is that your motion? Mm -hmm. You okay. want the motion to have addresses or names or anything? Addresses, we should. Okay. There we have the right. library street, or 295. Oh, well, they're so not. It's 32 not library same. street. Oh. The first one. It's Sorry, okay. Do yeah. the, we should do this. It's the official. That's record. fine. Sorry. 295 Westcombe Drive. Road. Western Road, uh, 387, that's not the right address. No, it's, it's the address. 187. Right. 187 River Road, West. I'll look at that one. Right. I'm going to make it closer to yeah, they did. Three ninety nine Lower Main. Well, uh, three ninety five Main Street West. Might already said that one. Thirty five Railroad Street. That's it. Twenty nine oh nine Vermont Route fifteen. Right, this application is different. They're just in different order. Did you get Library Street? I think 35 yeah. Library Street. Yeah. There's 29 on right. So and you have seven there, right, Donna? Yep. Sorry. Okay. And we have, did we have a second on the motion? Yes. Second. Okay. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Have it. Congratulations, homeowners. First one bit Sorry. leap in the right direction. Sorry for your losses. Yeah. yeah. Um, okay, town meeting. Let's prep. So I handed everyone a list of talking points if questions come up on specific topics. Uh, actually, do you have a let me get my act together? Sorry. Um, do you have the agenda for town meeting day town meeting? I don't I don't think I ever saw it. Yeah. Okay. I think that was one. Oh, I saw okay. Yep. So well, the warnings are one thing, but there are other things that happen during this process. Um so a quick town meeting prep. Uh, the capital equipment budget. Does everybody think like a hundred copies of that at the door? Is sufficient? Yeah, so I think it is. Yeah, we're all agree instead. We'll leave that for most black of and white. You get the one. So the one is yeah. a motion for the moderator. We need to motion for Tom to present. You, you're the one that asked Dave to that question motion right? for tom to participate in discussions and that gets any no vote 
construction plan. Yeah. Has to be in the end. Yeah. Oh, okay. You sure? Pretty much positive because I used to try and speak as a state rep in Eden and every now and again somebody's like, no. That's just me. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I wish I had done that. Okay. So we don't ever they do that for our state reps. reps. Oh, okay. I don't think we ever do that for our state reps. So maybe we should do that too. Yes. David's moderated. It's up to him to run. Yeah, yeah. After we elect David, he can figure that out. He's time. already elected. We elected him last year. That's Australia now, too. His position is Australia now. So he asked us for a motion to approve the agenda. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
will be at Fedora as soon as summer comes. Yeah. And well, that's that's a big one that if you want to do a budget. We should make an announcement that is available. Right. Yeah, there will only be one person in town meeting that might possibly notice that. Is that Walter? Walter. Yeah, Eric Wilson. Uh, Eric. I think we'll get a couple. Yeah, I think there will be a, a few. Um, we also had a minor the tax rate is slightly different, right? There was an error with the tax rate too. Am I wrong in thinking that? Because it says 2.19 and we were talking about 2.42, 2.242. So I'm not sure what the difference is. Well, that's that's the change yeah. in tax rate from the non-corrected previous tax rate. Is it just not the same? No, previous. That's the increase, right? No, it's going to raise the tax rate. Yeah, but Beth is yeah. Beth is on a different. I'm on page thirty of the bill of the town. Yeah, which is so Did you do that? That yes, you did that. What's Susan? You matched that. Beth is saying on this page of the town report, it shows the estimated change to be that 2.19, not 2.242. Yeah. That's, those are the numbers that Susan and I put together. What are the numbers? The boy from the town report. The 2.19. I don't know why. I mean, this is the official spreadsheet that we're working from, right? I'm referring to the email that you sent out to one of the residents. Yeah. All I said was from my master, and this is what I have. Mm -hmm. I, but it's different. It's my point. Yeah. Okay, so that's not too. Okay, I'll forget that number altogether. 2.19, we're all good with. I think it's 2. I don't think 2.42. 2. 2. 2. Yeah, I think 2. 2. I think 2.19 is wrong. Hold on there. Isn't that, isn't that where you have to adjust the tax rate for the grand list change that makes, there's a manual entry that needs to happen. Rosemary. Rosemary left. She's over there. She probably knows this off the back of her head. Facing that right pillar. Oh, yeah. The change that I propose is that that did end up changing potential rate was the estimated final for tax current year taxes two million one forty four one eighteen. Is that number? So the spreadsheet that I sent to Susan that should have gone in the town and board should have two points as well, which is consistent with Duncan's print that. Yeah. What's in the end? Yeah. I didn't remember. I remember. Yeah. yeah. That's okay, it. Again. Well, the, it's wrong in this. So yeah. somewhere between Susan and the printer. So we we went, Susan and I went line by line, just made sure it was tight as a whistle, and then that's what saved both Susie and Peter. So that's what we should have gone in the county floor. Well, the estimated year end is the the estimated year end in the budget column that is two million twenty four five thirty seven. The estimated year end in the spreadsheet is two million one forty four one hundred two. And I'm pretty sure that two million one forty four one hundred two is the right one. Yeah, uh, two two one four four one eight feet in the spreadsheet. Yeah, that's that's, 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 that's fiscal that's year twenty four, not fiscal year twenty five. Fiscal year twenty five is two one nine two one eight six. So. I'm looking at column F in the budget. I don't have columns on my counter. I don't have column numbers. Uh oh, F here. Oh. Okay, well, um, it is not coincidental that actual fiscal year 24 
is the number you just read off on the summary sheet on page 32. Just going to say that out loud. The exact same number. Look. You can just move it wherever you want. But oh, sorry, this. this okay. Thing. Well, I'm looking at. You're looking at the budget. I'm line. looking at the budget line. Understood. Which is different. Yeah, understood. In that number, I believe, should be. That matches. Yeah. Right here. Okay. Yeah. 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 Circle number matches page 32. Yeah, he's not arguing that. I'm not okay. I'm not arguing the FY25 budget. I'm arguing the estimated year end. Uh oh, um, year end. I gotcha. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I think that 2920.24537 is a prior, a prior spreadsheet. That did not take into account the revised one that I said, which is the one we all approved. As That's the, the one you said. Yeah, this is the one, and I took the one we approved and I just sat down. And, and the only thing that I found that was wrong was stuff in fiscal year 23. Well, I don't know what happened, but the estimated somehow in that, that and that's going to be the difference between the 219 and the 2.242. Yeah. Five one hundredths of a percent. No, I think you know. Yes, we have to find that problem, but larger issue. It's using a spreadsheet that is like manipulable. It's like probably we should start using software <laughs> that like goes directly into the town's book. And I used to be the treasurer. We like did a printout to a CSV file that got went into the town report. There's no room for human error. And here's there's like an here's a prime example of like. You know, you hit send, you think you're done, but what actually got printed is slightly off. And that's, you know, I think we might want to use this as a tool, but then maybe find out a different way to like put that tool into something that's like fail safe. We should be able to cut the face the wonder. So, okay, so, so I, I, I agree that. Tom, and I love it, and I would love to hear everyone if we have any more. Larger questions. Uh, that. I mean, paving reserve fund, we all know what that article is. Do we know what? Uh, there was like, one thing at the very end of the tweak that changed things, and I expect that I think it's in here that will tweak that number. It's this. It's what? It's it's the current. It's the estimated year end. But it calculates through what? Like what changed to calculate? What changed the was the cash on hand at the end of the year. Five. Okay. Yeah. So a big one that might get. Using uh, the state that we questioned since the ARPA money came in for the general fund, that is a new line item online. Like maybe as we go on for you to make sure everybody knows where it is. That's line 61. That's what page are you on? Uh, 61 20. 20. Page 20. Yeah, 12 caps on here. So that shows 585,560 coming in. Yeah. Um, but somebody can correct me if they want. We did we had a cut we had the $50,000 check to oh, that Thanks for coming, guys. Thank you. It's actually a bunch of um, we'll get a copy on the website. Yeah, I emailed LCPC. Not, I don't, they actually didn't get back to me, so okay. I'm wondering if like, they might not be open to the public yet, but I think as soon as they have, they right. are now. Yeah, yeah. have an email public. There it is. All, All right, right. In second. Yeah. We'll get so, one one here. 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 so, I'll give you in 10 minutes, yeah. but that's a new line item. Okay, wait, 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 wait. we can't have two lines. It's the picture you're going to see. That's the name here. Um, just 
Okay, so can we finish this out afterwards? Yeah. We can go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, so as you're going through the budget, I would point that out. It's you know, 500. Sorry, point what out? The ARPA, yeah. I got ARPA, yeah, 185. 50,000 to CUD, and what did we pay? 46, well, 2,600 a monthly, roughly? 465. 465. 812, 4487. Okay. And then are you going to want to explain how we move that into general fund to avoid? Well, this brings it in. I'll say that one. And yeah, the surplus. It's really going to need to be explained. And on the budget, it is page. Uh, 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 where is it? I got it. Or it's right here, page 30. So, by the numbers, approving this budget there, approving these appropriations on the bottom of page 30, and that's 110 to reduce taxes. We are expecting to have, we have 28,471 in addition to 23, right? We're expecting to have. So that grant matching is mostly our. Uh, yeah, but well, where's our, what are we carrying over in here? Where's our expected cash on hand for this, this year that we're in? Uh, I'm just trying to find it in here. <laughs> We have 126. Actual cash before reservation is 1 million, 142, 148. What line there? It's at the very top of the page on page oh, yeah. 30. Yeah, but then it backs out all the reservations and stuff. Right. That. And it ended up being 233. Right. Plus, ARPA brings us to 812.448. This is the proposed way to reserve it. That's $75,000. If there's a question about that, it's listed as industrial park expenses, I believe, from meeting with Mumley. You know, they were telling us it might be about 100000 125000 but when we had mentioned that the town had some property for primary ag mitigation, yeah, that, that it would bring it down. You can jump in yellow and you can go on. No, I think you're, I think you've got it. Yeah, but but that's that's an odd reservation to me. I don't know if it will be to the taxpayers. It's all their money. It's just we know that that's an expense. And we're all parking just again. We anticipate that still, and we don't know. It could be could be more, it could be less. Come back at two hundred thousand, come back at ten thousand. Yeah. I think it's an educated all part. I think it's a reasonable estimation. Yeah. yeah. What was it that called was, again? Huh? What was it called again? The estimation? No, 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 no. The monthly. What is the the monthly estimate? Is the what? The oh, it's like a ag under the ag mitigation. Yeah, ag enforcement and mitigation. Yeah, primary ag soil mitigation. Yeah, I mean, he was he was stuck at twenty five grand potentially for the paperwork. Uh, I think we paid that fifty thousand. I think we paid that fifty thousand for the Miles Barbonet pre bringing before bringing our budget into the we did. budget. Yeah, and, and, we, we did. and we paid forty six. So that's not coming out of this number. This was pre this. It's number. already been taken. Right, it's been taken. Yeah, we right. spent almost one hundred thousand dollars before we got it. Right, fifty plus forty six five. And the Mumley too. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And Mumley is under town select board or contracted or consultant services. Yeah. One of the other. Yeah. I'll let you guys chime in when that comes up. Okay. Yeah. I'm trying to remember where that something. There was a big number there. Which one? Mumley. Mumley. Uh, we bring out. Under that was 46 Select board consultant 165. It's mine. Well, it's under yeah. select board consultant services. Yeah, but it's in the year end. 
if anybody has a question on that. Yes. 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 It's in the it's in the agenda. Okay. So it's the 12K from the budget plus 46.5. Yep, got it. Okay. And the other thing that um, could come up is library revenue and expense, just because library is a hot topic. And I've already received a question about it. Um, because the total revenue. Um, now is um, 14 7 and on the total thing. Yeah, there's yeah. yeah, also tax rate is 35,000. Yeah, right. Because the public is not Yeah, see, yeah, I'm going to be referencing that, but don't put all the questions. Well, hopefully, we get the, the, the numbers line up. The the uh, line numbers. In the... Yeah, they do. Okay. Oh, uh, yeah, the row numbers. The row numbers. Yeah, I'm gonna have to pull that out too. So that represents. Yeah, you know, you the best you're gonna give so give an overview. Just gonna run through it and ask the people have questions as we go through. Don't run this one. I'm going to basically say, are there any questions on blah, 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 blah. I want to point out in this section. In the salary sheet. Um, yeah. In our expenses. And Duncan, you're going to talk about the industrial part, potential ARPA money going towards that, and the EA stuff. And that, or not at all. You want to vote as regional? Yeah. Yeah. If, if, the, if, the, if the subject comes up. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And these topics that you laid out for us that are mostly like if they come up, right? Okay. Right. Yeah. There's yeah, there's gonna be a topic that somebody will bring up. Yeah. Because I outside of other business, I've never seen anybody dig in nearly to the day. They want to look at the the last tax number and say they're good people. They're not gonna dig in to. Yeah, like, we're about Harlan Adams. There, there, are, there are some people who like to dig in. Well, Walter might, but most people are more interested in the last number. Well, we always have somebody who's interested in pulling out something big. The other thing that jumps out is the site um, capital improvements for up to a year end, which is much higher than or normal. Because of their grant for the oh, yeah. grant money to fund the whole. Do you know what I was trying to ask you about? Um, do you know what projects capital and uh, capital the highway guys were planning kind of generally? Uh, yeah. So just quick synopsis. Um, they're going to continue with the grants and aid program uh, down Labor Hill, uh, complete that road, and then they're going to work down. Since we have the excavator rented, the, the cost of efficiency worked down. Hopefully, to is it year end your for our current fiscal year? Next year. Yeah. Next year. Next year. Yeah. 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 As long as you have an idea. Yeah. It yeah. comes up with a budget. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Ask you to speak. You cool with that? I'm on it. Yeah. Assuming the voters are okay with the purple. Right. Okay. Maybe Mark. Is then. Jason going to be there? I'm going to find no. Say no. <laughs> Uh, the end of the day off, oh, he asked us at our last oh. meeting if we wanted him there, and there was no real consensus. He doesn't vote for that, right? That's true, too. Jason, okay. Well, he votes, he's not, he's not on the at least he told me he's not. The other thing is, the, culvert, the other thing is, culverts are high. Well, low. are you in oh. culverts are low? In the budget, in the budget, they're in, they're high for our estimated year end this year compared to last year and compared to the budget to this year twenty five. That's what the dumping, so that it reduced FY twenty five. Right. I'm just gonna call it out because it's a big. One. Well, and part of that difference was we asked to reduce spending for next year if possible. And a lot of those culverts were purchased as stock and then reimbursed for grant work. 
uh, especially through the supply chain order to pull it. But now that they're in stock, the highway guys are going to buy them as grants come up. So we don't need to funnel money up and back around to receive it. I'm not going to, I can't even folks to, to give a great detail on this. So that you told my me, no, no, I do because you haven't listened to the answers. I have, I have worked in my tool shop to make sure that we have 30 big peaks of ready at noon. <laughs> Mark, I get 30 people on my campaign, a hundred people with 30. Pieces. So, are you going to actually be there? So, we can, I am going to be there. I'm going to be nervous, yeah, but I've got my pie is ready. The fire will start, and when my get pie is ready, and I will load it at six. Oh, and I have a crew of volunteers. Yeah, yeah. yeah. see you tomorrow morning. Are you going? Are you going? It's almost my place to be. Tonight? No, yeah, I told him whatever I do. Yeah, okay, yeah. I'll text it to you. Thanks. Okay. Anything else worth calling out on the budget? Yeah, I just mentioned something. I think yeah. one of the things that's really interesting to people is um how much is uh property tax generated money and how much is it whether it's a percentage or the amounts. Yeah. You know, that's pretty Pretty significant, yeah. and I think it's And I'm I'm really going to try and include Tom to talk about where we are with all this grant money moving through our world. But you know, when you just talk about the grants and say offer and blah blah, it doesn't mean anything to people. But when you put it in the perspective of how it affects what they have to pay, the traffic is right. huge. And the college paying 350 grand a year in pilot, 450, 450. So it's huge. I, I used to put in the grants that we got during the current year in my report. <clears throat> I, I don't remember it particularly getting mentioned as, you know, other than you know, what the report. But, but things like general state aid to highway, that's not a grant, but it is non tax no, no, right. And the the article to approve the budget will say with an estimated X number of dollars to be raised from taxes in a estimated non tax revenue on tax. Is, is that what you're getting at? Or, I mean, yeah, yeah, the, the difference between the two, but you know, clarify is a strict as a statement. Yeah, you yeah. know, the way most of us think as opposed to the, yeah. most, most people do not know how much money flows into this town. So we should add that. So in your official version of the budget, we should insert lines at the top that says tax revenue, grant revenue, other non-tax yeah, revenue. Right here, Article 5, it says shall the voters authorize the total fund expenditures for operating expenses of 3,375,000, of which uh, 2.1 million is raised in taxes and an estimated 1 million in non tax revenue. And of that, pilot represents about 480,000 for the college and other state lands, and the remaining is, is grants, et cetera, et cetera. Grants, Wait, funds can you break that down in a statement when we start talking about that? Bit? For the, for the library, absolutely. Right at the beginning, yeah. And then I think it, it'll actually help to make that article more, more clear. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Would that be, is that good enough or do you want more detail? No, no, I just had the thought as I was walking out. Like, yeah, you listen yeah. to you going over all those numbers and yeah. saying, well, I'm not sure. Home. <laughs> but thank yeah. you, everybody, because you've done work. Thank you. Okay. Uh, anything else for town report for a town meeting? Perhaps it's red green. Tom, Duncan, anything else for a town meeting? Perhaps? I, I can almost guarantee that somebody's going to ask a question that we have not prepared for. It. For sure. Yeah. And that's okay. Yeah. 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 Okay. If that's, if we don't have anything else, then I think that we are adjourned. Yeah. Oh, yeah. With our local reps. Usually, when they're introduced and they break up the meeting a little bit, there always seems to be a collective groan in the audience, at least near me. Could we like bring them down to like half an hour and don't work? 
I'll, uh, yeah, I'll talk to David about it in the morning. So I'll do my best. Just stand up and say, no. don't consent. No, we'll, we'll consent for a half an hour of an outsider being able to speak, and then at that point, we can reevaluate. The fact of the matter is, they're bringing this in a million some down. Still, so there's a collective group. I'm being there is. They, right. In the tower, well, that's all they realize that those state reps, yeah, they are, before they we go. The reality is, for your David time, is the moderator. Or, over the past year, yeah, we can uh, ask him to do we, that. It's not couldn't have done it without you. Yeah, yeah. Good, yeah. Good, yeah. good luck. Your legion looks better. You're healing. Sorry, go ahead. That that is not happening. So, this was the one that we did. Good budget. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, we're adjourned. Um, so my board members don't leave though because we need to sign the dedication. Yeah, that's what yeah. Right. So, so, so I have a question. What's in the book? I also have a question. So, yeah, so this is one day in library base. So, this is me working from home. Union.